Hi guys, welcome to Google Analytics. How, how to understand your traffic so you can make smart decisions. Installing Google Analytics, it's easy. Anybody can do it. You know, you just copy and paste some code, you're done. Now, there's the second part of the process, which is to read your analytics and know what's going on. And most importantly, to make good decisions based on the data you get. So let's talk a little bit about that. The first thing you see when you log into Google Analytics is the dashboard. And the dashboard is an incredibly amazing tool. And something that a lot of people don't know is that you can personalize your dashboard as much as you want. And this is an amazing time saver. Just you can put all your favorite reports in the dashboard. And that way you don't have to like browse through a lot of different pages. You can have everything in one page. So how do you do this? When when you're at any report in Google Analytics, you'll notice that at the very top, there's a button that says Add to Dashboard. And that's it. You can add anything you want to the dashboard. You can move things around. And you can eliminate any uh, reports you don't like from your dashboard. So I highly encourage you to use it because that will make things easy for you. And if things are easy, then you'll do it more often, which is really good for your business. So again, dashboard use it please okay let's talk about one of my favorite reports on google analytics which is the map overlay you can see all the countries and you can take this to the city level or uh, state level and you can see what what countries and what cities and what states are sending you uh, most traffic and which ones have the highest conversion rates by the way if you don't know what a conversion is is whatever you set it up to be. It could be someone filling out a contact form, someone buying a product from you on your website, um, someone clicking on, on, on a button, someone staying on your website for a minute, a minute and a half, whatever you want it to be. So you'll be setting up your goals and I'll explain later how to do this. But for now, just keep in mind that for all these different countries or cities or states that are sending you traffic, you can take a look at two different things. The first one is how many uh, visitors you get for every, every country. So here we can say that the United States got 1,700 visitors, China got 1,000, Brazil got 650. And not only we can see how, ma how many visitors we get from each country, but we can also see the conversion rate for each country. And this gets really cool. For example, the conversion rate for China is only 0.64%, whereas the conversion rate for Colombia is almost 8%, and the conversion rate for uh, Venezuela is almost 7%. So, at the beginning of the video, I said that we're not just going to analyze the data, but the data is going to tell us what we need to do. So in this case, it would make a lot of sense to have a specific landing page for countries like Colombia and Venezuela. And I wouldn't focus so much on China because the conversion rate is very low. So that's why it's so important that you take a look at your analytics. You want to know where you, where you want to focus your efforts. You want to focus your efforts on countries that have a conversion rate below 1% or those that have conversion rates around 8%. Okay. Same thing with the traffic sources. Uh, for example, we can see that Google pay-per-click has a conversion rate of almost 4%. And for example, Yahoo Organic has a conversion rate of uh, 4%. Uh, conversion rate is also pretty good for Google Organic. But for example, we can see that um, Baidu and this other search engine in China, they have very low conversion rates. And this is really interesting because this website, I mean, this company was spending a lot of money on a pay-per-click campaign in China, which they shouldn't be doing at all because the conversion rate is very, very low. Okay, so we decided to stop that pay-per-click campaign and focus more on the, on the traffic sources that are sending us uh, all the traffic. And actually, I have the first 10 traffic sources here but below that, I had like, you know, for example, I had Twitter. You know, this company was spending a lot of time on Twitter, but the conversion rate was extremely low. I think that maybe one person out of 10,000 uh, filled out a contact form. So they decided that Twitter wasn't worth their time, or at least that they were going to reduce the time they were spending on Twitter. 
Same thing here with keywords. Um, we, some keywords have conversion rates of like 9.6% uh, or 8.5%, which are extremely high, really good conversion rates. Whereas other keywords like business English only has a 0.4 conversion rate. And this is extremely interesting because we were doing SEO and pay-per-click for this company. And we found that we were uh, going after some, some bad keywords, which we stopped doing right away as soon, as soon as we saw this. So unless you see what keywords are sending you traffic and which ones are actually generating either leads or sales, you don't know, you don't know what you're doing. You're just like, going after like a thousand different keywords where you should be focusing on maybe the four or five that are making you money. Another really good report on Google Analytics is the top content. This is the most popular content, the most popular pages on your website. And he, when I take a look at this, I, I see three different things. So the first, the first one is the, the, the average time on page. Okay, um, and I, and it's not that if they spend less time, it's a bad thing necessarily, but you wanna, you wanna keep that in mind. I mean, why is people like spending only like 20 seconds on this page, whereas they're, they're spending like 40 or 50 seconds on this other page? Again, nothing is good or bad, but you have to think about why things happen. Then we have the bounce rate, and a lot of people really get scared of the bounce rate, like that, that's the pest. That's not the case. Bounce rate mostly means that after seeing uh, a given page, people leave, leave, leave the website or they don't go to any other page after that. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. For example, if you have a blog post and people go to your blog, they read the blog and then they leave, that's gonna count like a, like a bounce. But it's, that's not a bad thing. I mean, if you have like loyal readers that go to your website all the time and every time they just go read one article and then they leave, that's not a bad thing. I mean, they'll probably do business with you whenever they're ready. So again, you have to understand what it means, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing to have a bounce on any of your pages. However, there are some pages where you don't wanna have bounces. For example, if you expect people to go uh, to a page and fill out a contact form and a lot of people are bouncing and not going to the next page, well, then that's a problem because people are going to this page and bouncing, going away from your website where you want them to go to